I'm Jessica Mitten for Ivy Times TV, reporting from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And joining me today is Joe Greco of Meridian. Now, this is definitely a busy week when you do look at the economic calendar and more earnings. We do have that October jobs report on Friday, but in company news, we did have BlackBerry today say they're going to replace their CEO and they're sort of revamping their plans. They originally said they might go private. Now, we don't really know what's going to happen. When you're an investor and you do look at a company like that, what do you really look for and what do you think the future is for BlackBerry? Well, clearly the big question is what's that underlying value and is that value better in pieces? What are those pieces? Um, and with, you know, iBank's looking at this for over a year and a half and no one really stepping forward, I tend to think that going private is really not an option. It's kind of more being sold to whoever's going to pay, you know, a price. And that price literally could just be a price. So we've seen the stock get shredded and, and clearly here today on that news, it seems like it's pushing the stock price lower, but in reality it should pave the way for perhaps leadership that's a little bit more agreeable to terms that are realistic with what the market will bear. And at this point in time, it's, it's very unrealistic to expect something in the double digits for that company, whether as a whole or in part. Moving over to some more exciting company news, Twitter is going to have their IPO and a lot of people are expect expecting that to happen this Thursday at the New York Stock Exchange. What do you think that it will really be like with Twitter down here? Because originally a lot of tech companies would go to the NASDAQ and now it's, it's a big deal that Twitter is coming over here. Well, let's not, you know, avoid the obvious. Uh, the last two, the last, you know, big social media presence that, that went to market, you know, had a tremendous uh, trip right out of the uh, the gate there. And, um, you know, I think investors are kind of over it now because of what they've been able to do quarter over quarter. But focusing on Twitter and their IPO Thursday, hotly contested. They've raised the uh, indicated window. It's anticipated books are going to be closed today for the opening on uh, on Thursday. So we'll have a little bit of a gap there to really figure out where this stock's going to land. Um, it is is important to be on the New York. I mean, the, the the brand recognition alone, the fact that we're combining with ICE and there's going to be uh, tons of potential there for the marketplace and the offering to clients is very important to the future of the NYSE and what that brand is going to bring to listed companies. But in the end, it's also, uh, you know, it's an, it's an unknown. Yeah, it's a technology company to some extent. It's an advertising vehicle to some extent. It's it's social media. It's news aggregation. You know, it's, uh, it's, 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 you know, what are people thinking um, in hyperspeed? So it's all of that. And it's really the sorting that out is going to be, uh, you know, the fun part of it. But how the stock is going to trade, I, I think it's going to do very well out of the blocks. Moving over to earnings news, we are getting Tesla's earnings on Tuesday after the market closes. And when you look at companies like Ford and GM, they were struggling in Europe. But Tesla is a little bit of a different kind of company. When you're an investor, what do you look for for a company like Tesla? Very interesting. Don't cover the company. Don't own shares. I, I'm a big believer in what they're trying to do. I think Elon Musk is is not only a, a pioneer, but um, you know one of those great entrepreneurs that's going to be in the history books as putting his money and all of his reputation where you know his mouth is and, and standing behind his products and his ideas. Um, it's just so interesting to think that someone could spend six figures on a car that didn't do well in the thirty, forty thousand dollar, you know, um, model from the Toyotas, the Fords, uh, you know, and and the you know those you know mass producing companies. But I do think Tesla has a tremendous, tremendous, you know, quasi cult you know, like following brewing. And that to me has, you know, quite a bit of, uh, you know, owns a quite a bit of that markup in the stock price. Now, what does that mean? Well, tomorrow we're going to find out, are they actually, you know, really putting the rubber on the road in terms of both sales guidance and, and what that loyalty is going to look like. And for the future, what is the economy? What are the incentives going to be like? I mean, we've heard about, you know, several states already signing some packs about emissions for automobiles through 2020 and what that means for credits that Tesla's already receiving in California or will receive in states like New York. Um, what's that going to look like in Europe, who's always been very forward thinking from, you know, a green perspective. So I think I think we get a really nice report out of them tomorrow. And I'd really like to see some forward guidance that's very strong going into year end for Tesla. And finally, with the October jobs report that is coming out on Friday, a lot of people like to look at the average hours worked, the hourly rates, the participation rate. What kind of stands out to you when that report does come out? Really all of it, because it, it's telling a story that's much different than, than just that one you know, headline metric or, or several metrics that come out in different forms over the course of the month. But, but I really want to see the drill down of, of you know, what are people really doing, because the straw poll that I keep doing doesn't show the type of you know, rosy improvement that seems to be the theme coming out of uh, you know, the, the BLS or out of Washington or, or really out of anyone that, has, that says anything about uh, you know, payrolls or unemployment or employment. So for me, it's going to... It's going to be that drill down and really seeing, you know, will sentiment be strong enough to carry uh, retail in, into the holiday season? 
will sentiment be strong enough to improve upon, or will the numbers be strong enough to improve upon sentiment for people to take on more, not only more consumer debt, which is, you know, those low thousand, you know, couple hundred, couple thousand dollars at a clip, but also the bigger ticket purchase items, which is, which is really what will make the, uh, you know, the recovery strong. And that's, you know, of course, homes, automobiles to an extent, but really homes and real estate, and then, of course, investment dollars. Um, we need to have the baton passed off at some point. The Fed can't buy forever. Well, Joe, thank you so much for your insight. That's Joe Greco of Meridian, and I'm Jess Minton for Ivy Times TV.